Tim Johnson is a former wrestler, coach, and national administrator who was the man who directed the 1984 Olympic Games wrestling in Los Angeles. And this must feel like the Olympics today, Tim. Well, it's a little like Fiddler on the Roof. Tradition. The tradition of Iowa wrestling runs deep, and it doesn't matter whether it's in Los Angeles, in high school, or college wrestling, you have a little flavor of Iowa. And it's all here today, Iowa and Iowa State and Hilton Coliseum. We also want to tell you about a special feature called Best Shot. Our old friend Chuck Patton is going to be back from Seattle to help out once in a while with a, a program of analysis of great wrestlers' techniques. We'll tell you more about that later. Now, Timmy, here we are with the teams coming out onto the mat for one of the biggest matches of the year every year, Iowa against Iowa State. But this year, this is uh, probably the first time in many years when it's not a clear-cut favorite. It's been a rough start, especially for Iowa. It's been a rough start in they've lost to Penn State. Because of injuries, they did not win the Midlands. Mm -hmm. It's the first time that this meet hasn't been for the number one ranking. But I think that probably uh, by the time March comes around, it might be. I personally believe come March, it's going to come down to the Cyclones and the Hawkeyes. As it has 16 of the last 18 years. And in fact, the last nine years in a row, Iowa has won the national championship, as you know. And the 1977 Iowa State team, which won the title, is here. They're here tonight. They're here for a reunion, and you have to imagine what kind of inspiration that is for the young Cyclones. Well, here's an inspiration. He's the coach at Iowa. Dan Gable, you all know him. Everybody knows the record of Dan Gable as a wrestler. He was the best. As a coach, he has become the best. You know, you look at that percentage there. There's only one man in college wrestling who has a better percentage. And he's standing on the other side of the mat. The young Turk in the college coaching ranks, Jim Gibbons, has learned how to do something that many other coaches never get the chance to do. That is beat Dan Gable in a dual meet. And he had 26 and 1 for a complete record. An unbelievable set of coaches there. And I'm going to tell you, we have two matches tonight of all the matches that we have where wrestlers are absolutely undefeated. We're going to show you 150 pounds first. The national champion from Iowa is Jim Heffernan. And it's not often that a national champion cannot be considered the favorite. But last year, in his two matches with Tim Krieger, he drew and was defeated. Jim Heffernan is a top technician, and he is a gold medal winner. And his opponent is Tim Krieger, a sophomore from Iowa State. Tim Krieger was the freshman of the year last year, and like I said, he beat Jim Heffernan, and you know he has the national championship on his mind. Now, that's not the only place where we have two unbeatens head-to-head. -head. It also happens at 167 pounds, and the first man up here is Royce Alger from Lisbon for the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think we have a contrast in styles here. Non nonetheless, it's going to be real exciting. Royce is very physical. He likes to intimidate his opponents. And his opponent at 167 pounds may be new to you on Iowa Public Television because this is his first year at Iowa State, although he's, he is a transfer. He is Kevin Jackson. It's going to be hard to intimidate Kevin Jackson. And he's a three-time All-American, transferred in from Louisiana State. He's a great technician. I think we have a very exciting match here. Well, Iowa and Iowa State, we always say anything can happen, and every year something strange does happen. Now, Dan Gable has never in his coaching career lost more than one dual meet. How's he going to avoid doing it this year? Well, I think Iowa State has a game plan. They think they can win the first three matches tonight. Iowa has to break that game plan. They have to win one of those first three. Well, we'll see. We're back at Hilton Coliseum in Ames for the duel between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Iowa State Cyclones. And Hilton Coliseum is getting alive here, as you can see, as these teams are introduced. Those are the records this year. But you see that Iowa has the series lead, although Iowa State won that big one last year. Like I said, Doug, Iowa's coming off a little bit of a rough start. They've had some injuries, and they did lose that one match to Penn State. Now, some of the matchups tonight are tremendous. Iowa State figures to be the favorites in the first three matches. So, and in the middle, Iowa gets its power, but Randall and Gezi will be a good one. That terrific Heffernan versus Krieger match at 150. At 158, it'll be either John Heffernan or Mitch Kelly against Carter. Two unbeatens at 67. Two very strong men at 177. Chipperelli, Iowa's favorite. And at 190 in heavyweight, it may be that Iowa is just a little bit, Iowa State is just favored by a tad. So Iowa State figures to start strong and end strong. Iowa wants to break into that somehow, don't they? Well, I think that we're going to see this year that we talk about Iowa's middle. And Iowa's middle is tough, and it's got to come through tonight for them to be in the match. There's Jim Gibbons, who is in his second year as the coach. 
this year of the team that Amateur Wrestling News has ranked number third, number three in the country at this time. Now this was late in December, last ranking given, and Penn State's first. Well again, it is only January. It's two months before the NCAAs, and rankings are just rankings, Doug. We just heard last night that Penn State and Oklahoma State had a tie. Now here are individually rated wrestlers in this uh, meet tonight. Iowa State has, I think, about a half a dozen people who are in the top rankings, and Iowa has about four ranked in the top two. You see the captains of the teams out in the middle now. There are the ranking people. You see six of them for Iowa State with two number ones, and two of the four of them for Iowa, number one and number two. It doesn't get much better than this. Nope. And we're about ready to start. The referee tonight is going to be Bill Roth from New Hampton, Iowa. He's the man under the gun. There's a lot of pressure on the fellow in his position, and you'll hear him talking from time to time because we do have him wired for sound, as we always like to do with our officials. Well, Bill's a veteran referee in the high school and college ranks, and I'm sure he'll do a great job tonight. And at 118, as we said, Iowa State figures they have to start fast. But they have Perry Summit in there against Steve Martin. I think one of the things you're going to see here is the difference in the physique. I think we have a larger 118-pounder in Perry Summit, and we really have a 114-pounder of the international weight class for Stevie Martin, and so that could make a difference. Now, Martin, of course, of Iowa is in the black. The Iowa State colors are red. You might be interested to know, too, the two coaches had full weeks this week to work with their teams. And, and the, the, the story was the same from both sides, that they'd had the best week of practice they'd had all year. They were both excited about the kind of practices they had. Perry Summit in the red on the left, slightly lighter if you just happen to be watching in black and white, against Steve Martin, who is a freshman. Well, I wonder if we're going to see anything to do with shape here. Perry Summit coming off, um, just coming back from an ineligible scholastic-wise. It could play a difference here. There's a single, uh, nice double leg shot turned into a single by Summit. We'll see what he can do with this. Well, he's got to come around and clear that arm so that he can get through. Otherwise, he's going to let Steve Martin hang on, and he doesn't want to have a stalemate. There. there it is. Two points for Summit. Now, if you remember last year, Summit keyed that big meet with a, with a pin. Right here, you're seeing Steve Martin try to get into a Granby position. Rightly so, his dad really invented the move, and you're going to see him try that from the bottom. That's a fact. Uh, his father, Billy Martin, at Virginia Beach, Virginia, did invent the Granby roll. Oh, he lost it. And Summit hurt himself. We have, one point we have uh, these sorts of things happen, you know. You never know what's going to happen. And I mean, and Summit came from putting his man back to the mat and came up hurt. It really surprised me. It looked like he put Steve Martin down hard, and I didn't see the fact that he came down hard. Here comes the replay. On in this, as he brings him back to the mat, you're going to watch Stevie Martin go into a Grand Bureau position right there. It oh, was yes. really Martin's move. But... He, it was Martin's move. He had a Granby position going right during that coming down to the mat, but you did see Summit hit hard. Yep, he hit right on the side of his head and, uh, and neck there probably. Jarred him right down the spine from the looks of it. That was pretty impressive on Martin's okay, part, though. He really had that Granby going. So here we go again. Summit leads 2-1 to one after the escape by Martin. I think that Steve Martin is going to have to establish himself on the feet here to score the enough points to beat Perry Summit because I think he's going to be able to get away. He's just got to get the takedowns. Steve Martin, you may remember his brother Billy who wrestled for Oklahoma State. Yeah, an All-American. Summit is in again on that single leg, locking onto it. He's taller than uh, Martin, too, and that helps. Take Easy. Now you watch here, really, Stevie has his arms. Steve That's Martin had his arm where he wanted. Perry Summit was over the arm and not inside it, and that gave Steve Martin the opportunity to get out. Well, it made the crowd appear that he was in a, that Summit was forcing a near fall position, but it was not true. It's four to two now after the escape. Well, let's see, first minute, first uh, minute of the period is gone. 
And we're down to the last 25 seconds now. You know, Summit is, Summit is getting what he wants here. Summit is scoring the points from their feet, and he's not worrying about Martin getting out and getting one. You'll trade two for one anytime. Again, the long single shot, and he has just about 15 seconds to do something with it. Uh-oh, it's Martin. And there's a big takedown for Steve Martin on a counter. That's exactly what Iowa wanted. There's Dan Gable. Harry Summit got out of position there. Flattened out and it enabled Steve Martin to spin around for the two. Well, as you said, Iowa's looking for an upset in one of these first three. And uh, it's happened at 118 before. Summit looked a little tired there at the end of that He period. did already at the end of the first period, and it could be a factor. Who had the choice there? Summit is down at any rate. Summit you know, had the choice. He decided to go down. Rolls out. Might be a reversal. It is. And he let Martin go. Now right here, he's going to have to improve. There, he cut off. Oh, Martin did a nice job that time. Both up. A lot of action here. Steve Martin did do a nice job of kipping into Gary Summit there to enable him to keep from getting taken down. All right, the tempo's already up. We're only at 118 pounds. Iowa against Iowa State. Summit has had three takedowns. Martin got one at the end of the first period and didn't get answered by an escape. That's the time to get him right at the end of the period. Again, Summit, he can, he can reach that almost any time he wants it. What he's not getting done, he's not getting cut across to the double in time here. He's getting in on it, but then he's losing his position. And Martin, who scored this way one time, is beginning to sprawl out and come around for the takedown. And he now leads seven to six. You know, all the initiation has been done by Summit, and it, the counter moves by Martin has enabled him to get two takedowns. This would be a tremendous uh, morale booster for Martin, who's had a tough start for the year. What has happened is Summit's in a position he doesn't want to be in. He did not want to have Martin think he was in the match at this time. And right now, you can believe that Steve Martin knows he's in the match. Best thing that's happened to him all year. Lots of ways here. Seven to six, Martin of Iowa leading Perry Summit. We know that uh, the Cyclones wanted to win the first three. Because Iowa gets tough in the middle and has capability of getting a, of major points in there, too. Martin driving in with his weight, but Summit does get into the hand fighting position and comes out. It's a tie, 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, riding time, nothing that matters. 20 seconds to go in the second period. There's a beautiful goal. It's a three-point near fall. And there's the end of the period. Referee didn't hear it. A big throw by Summit, a five-point lead. You've got to believe that Perry Summit believes in himself because he really threw himself into that lateral. Nice hip action. Here it comes, right here. He decides right there he's going to go, but he really throws his hips into him, stays with him, ends up. You bet has it tight. There must be something about this Hilton Auditorium come up with the big throws. And that was a five-point move. He likes it. Now Summit, Martin decides to go down. And so Summit is asking his coach, should I let him go or what? He's going to stay on him for a while, I think. Now he's going to let him go. 12-8, an escape for Martin. Well, what Summit cannot do here is play a conservative, and it doesn't look like he's going to. 
But the last thing Coach Gibbons wants is for Perry Summit to become conservative here. 12 to eight. There's a long shot again. Now here's where he's got to finish off. He's holding on, and this is where he's going to get in trouble. He's got to cut off like he's trying to do. He's got to either come through or cut off. He's got to finish it. He can't sit there. A lot of time going by, meanwhile. This has cost 30 seconds so far. Right. It's not really hurting Perry Summon in some ways here because it's getting time off the clock. Stalemate. And up we come to the middle. Billy, I keep call, I'm going to keep wanting to call him Billy Martin. I hope I haven't called him that yet. It's Steve Martin of Iowa, freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia, now down by four. There's a double leg by Summit. He put his man right on his back. I don't think he got called once. He didn't hold him long enough. There's where the new rule comes in, Doug. You have to have a two count. Last year, that would have been two points. This year, no. You have to hold him for two. They are looking for the extra points here. They want at least a four-point win by Summit. You're going to see him continue to cut Steve Martin loose and try to rack up the points. We have a minute to go in the third period. Opening match, Iowa and Iowa State. Summit against Martin. And Summit leads 14 to 9. That's the difference of that big five-point throw he got a while ago. Boy, that was a winner throw. I'll tell you what. In a meet like this, the winner is going to be the one that's most aggressive. That was a warning against Martin. Bill Ross said he was blocking off with his head. Well, I'll tell you what, you get a little gun shy. Back to the middle again. You, you get a little gun shy, Doug, when you know, when you've been thrown like that. Summit, who comes from Bloomington, Indiana. Steve Martin from Virginia. I'll tell you what, the job of Steve Martin right now is to keep this thing a three-point decision and not to let it be a four. Well, there are 15 seconds left, and it would take a throw, I think, uh, for that to, for anything to happen now. And you're not going to see a throw here because if something happened and he slipped, that's five points for Steve Martin. So you're going to see Perry Summit circle, play conservative here. It was a nice win for him. He hasn't been warned yet, and so he can afford to take one. And Martin can't. 14 to 9. We're down in the last few seconds. You can see Martin trying to get a throw, and he couldn't. And Iowa State, after falling behind, comes back and wins at 118. Well, that was an interesting match. I think that uh, a lot of desire came through on Perry Summit because I think he was tired, and I think he just decided that he had to have this match, and it was a great throw that he threw, and it, there's a lot of fortitude there. That was the turning point in the match. With a 7-7 tie, Summit threw a beautiful lateral drop on Martin and got five points from it to take the lead that was the margin of victory. You know, you've got to wonder, when you come off not competing for a half a year, you have some doubts in your mind. Right now, Perry Summit has alleviated those doubts. He did a nice job. I'll tell you what, I think this is going to be a good match. It's Bill Kelly of Iowa State, ranked number two, against John Regan of Iowa who is a sophomore, unrated, but very, very eager. You're going to see right off the bat what this match is going to be about. You're going to see John Regan take a lot of open shots. He keeps the pressure on his opponent a lot. But this is where Bill Kelly is tough. He likes opponents to shoot into him, and then he will counter. And a lot of times, they'll go to their back. Kelly in red of Iowa State. His team leads 3 to nothing as a result of Summit's decision at 118 pounds. If you just joined us, it's Iowa Public Television's Iowa against Iowa State. I'm Doug Brown with Tim Johnson. Open position. It's kind of the youngster against the veteran here, but I'll tell you, this youngster, and John Regan, is not really scared of anybody, and he's going to keep the pressure on you. I know the Iowa State coaches would like Kelly to be aggressive. That's the thing. They don't want, what is it they say? They don't want to make a hero out of, uh, out of John Regan. Right, and Bill Kelly is as good as it, as it comes in the nation when he's on. When his offense is on, there's very few people that can beat him, if anyone. First period is three minutes long, as you know. And in the second period and third period, they flipped the coin early to find out which team would get the choice in the opposite alternate matches. And the person can either choose even on the feet or up or down. You can go all or he can defer, on the feet. Or he can defer to his opponent, let him make the decision. Nobody's made a move yet, and we're about uh, 20 seconds gone. 
No, a minute and a half gone. They're both worn. Both worn. I really believe that Johnny Regan, to be in this match, has to do what he does best, and that is pressure his opponent with his low shots. He needs to get in there and go a little bit more. Well, on the other hand, uh, Kelly would like to get points on his feet, I'm sure, for Iowa State. And it probably doesn't make uh, Cyclone coaches feel good not to see shots. They really look like they're stalking each other out. They're, look, they're checking each other out a lot. They've never wrestled before, as far as I know. John Regan is from Cedar Rapids, LaSalle. They're in the center of the match. Now the referee's not going to let him get by. Calls a point against each man. Now that could come back to haunt him later on. Two on one tie by Bill Kelly. He likes to work off that two on one. And it's not where Regan likes to be, so they do have contrasting styles. You notice Regan is not letting Kelly come under. We're almost at the end of the first period. Right, and I think Regan really wanted to have that takedown. I think Kelly feels real good on the mat. There's, There's a, a shot. nice shot by Regan, and Kelly's down, two to nothing. Beautiful driving shot, single leg by John Regan. It is three to one because of the uh, Oh, three song. to one, I'm sorry, three to one. That's exactly what Iowa State did not want to happen. And it's exactly what Iowa did want to happen. And exactly worked out for Gable. Iowa, your choice. I told you, I thought there you might be You notice, here's the open here. shot. He comes off to a single, and he just changes the angle, takes the angle completely away from Bill Kelly, comes out on top for two. The choice went to Regan. He decided to, to uh, go on the feet again because it worked in the first period. You go with your strength. That Kelly. Watch the head now, okay? Kelly is complaining about uh, being bumped by the head, but boy, Regan is in again on that leg, and Kelly has to counter. Remember we said at the top that we thought Iowa wanted to win one of the first two matches because they were not favored in either one. And here Regan leads Kelly three to one. Well, that last shot was interesting because I think Bill Kelly's a little more ready for it right now. And I think the element of surprise has to be on the side of Regan, as far as strength is concerned, for him to be successful. Kelly's not reached Regan at all here. We have a minute and 16 seconds to go in the second period. Summit won at 118 over Martin, 14 to nine, Iowa State three, and Iowa nothing. Well, what you're seeing here is really in favor of Iowa. If those two can stay on their feet most of this match, I think that's where they feel, where Iowa feels that John Regan can be in this match till the end. They don't want to spend time down on the mat. And a double leg by Regan. Comes off on a single, and again, Kelly is in a position where he has to counter. The number two ranked man is on a defensive posture. Right, he's not showing a lot of offense, and I'm sure that Coach Gibbons wants him to show a little bit more. Again, he controls the arm, Kelly, as he comes out, two on one, but he hasn't been able to do anything off it. Regan has been well-schooled for this match. Dan Gable is, is, uh, is famous for that among wrestlers and coaches, having people ready for particular people. John Regan is a good student also because he really listens to the coach. He got out of position that time, and Kelly, has Regan in a cradle. I don't know if he can make anything out of it, but I think maybe he can get some back points here. Not yet. Almost out of time. That tied the match, though. 3-3, three, three. Kelly got two. It was a good move by Bill Kelly. He got John Regan out of position and got the two points. But John Regan did a nice job of not going over. Here's the replay. Now he snaps him down and gets John out, and he goes right for the leg, takes the chin to the knee, has him locked up for a cradle, and John Regan's in big trouble here. But he knows where he's at. He posts with the arm, as you see, the elbow right there, posts with it, and he stays so that he doesn't get back points against him. All right, Kelly has the choice, and he wants to take down. He figures that he can get points by coming up. And then maybe take his chances well, you're on gonna his see, feet. There, yeah, you're going to see John Regan. He just did it. He cut him loose. Let's stay on the feet, he says. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Four to three in favor of Kelly. You got my time. 
Find out what Bill Roth wanted there. Now he's going to set him back up again. This is Kelly of Iowa State against Regan of Iowa. Is this Regan going to be tough in about two years or not? Hey, he's showing right now he can wrestle with anyone. Right now he's looking for that. He's got to cut across here. And he got it. A takedown for Regan. Beautifully done. And he leads five to four. Riding time, there's not enough to matter. Out they come even, 5-5. Five, five. Boy, Regan knows just what he wants to do here, and as long as he can execute, he's controlling this match. 5-5. Five to five. With about a minute and 20 to go. Fine performance by John Regan. You know, Bill Kelly's very dangerous, and any time John Regan could shoot in, if he's out of position at all, or if Bill gets him out of position, he could put him on his back. So this thing, it will not be over, as they say, until it's over. They're out in the middle with less than a minute to go in a tie match. There will be no riding time. So it's whoever gets the takedown here, my friend. At 126 pounds. Iowa against Iowa State at Hilton Coliseum. Well, I'd say a tie will go in Iowa's favor as far as the meet is concerned. I know Gibbons did not want to come out of here with anything less than a victory for Bill Kelly. Kelly did not get the leg. You saw him reach. There's the single by, by Regan. And Kelly has to fuss with it to keep from losing this match. Regan driving in on the single leg from the outside. Kelly's out now. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Kelly puts any kind of offense on him right now. Well, he has about five seconds to do it. This is looking more and more like a draw. And a double leg by Regan, but he doesn't have time. That's it. No riding time, it's a draw. Well, they put a little break into the game plan right there. John Regan's tie, although I know Regan is not satisfied with the tie. Of course, Kelly isn't, but it has to go in favor of Iowa as far as the game plan is concerned. It's 5-5 five, five now. Or rather, it's, uh, it was 5-5 five to five in that match. And it's now 5 for the Cyclones and 2 for the Hawkeyes at two matches. We go to 134. Again, probably Iowa State is favored. I'd say Iowa State's favorite, but right now... With Jeff Gibbons in the red right. against Bubba Strauss, a redshirt freshman for Iowa. This Jeff is Gibbons has really proven that he can wrestle with the best of them. Seems to rise to the occasion, give all the best wrestlers great goes. Wins a lot, too. I think that uh, he definitely is the favorite here. Bubba Strauss comes from North Olmsted, Ohio. He's with the Heffernan family. They all came from the same place. And although he's had a rough start this year, they had a good week of practice. And, boy, I think a lot of things happened on both these teams this week. Don't you, Tim? You know that uh, both coaches have worked hard, not only on the bodies, but on the heads of these wrestlers. They're going to have them ready to go. Bubba Strauss. You know, how a young freshman thinks on the mat is as important as anything, and Bubba Strauss has to think that he can win to be in this match, and you just don't know what happened in this, this week of practice. It could be that he's really ready for this. Circle. <laughs> Bubba Strauss against Jeff Gibbons. You have contrasting styles here. You have a low-level attack mostly used by Jeff Gibbons, and you have a a Greco-Roman wrestler, an upper body attack by Bubba Strauss. See Gibbons going under, now uh, Strauss controlling from the top. Whip it, try it. Head and arm control on top. Well, actually double underhooks under there with pressure on the head. What's, they, what Strauss has to do here is develop some kind of momentum from the feet. And he really wants to get two for takedown here. Take that momentum away from Jeff Gibbons. We have about a minute and a half left, or a little more than that. Gibbons tried to go all the way for a double, couldn't get it, and again, Strauss is controlling the head with the double underhooks there. Now all Strauss is doing right, he's got to get his head to the side to work that front headlock. There he goes. Now he's got to work something from there, or it's a resting position. 
They're on the edge of the mat. Referee says, I've seen enough. Let's go back out and start over. 118, Summit beat Martin. 14 to nine for an Iowa State lead. Kelly and Regan Drew at 126 pounds. And here we are at 34. Joe Gezzi against Greg Randall's coming up next at 142. Two rated wrestlers. Well, Gibbons just barely blocked that off. It was a nice uh, spin there by Strauss. That's where Strauss wants to be. He likes to work that front headlock, snap, spin around. Out here, Red. There is no score. We're in the last, oh, about 45 seconds. Here. Oh! That came out Gibbons, Greg. Gibbons got his head out and came up with a takedown. It's 2 nothing. Not uncharacteristic of Strauss to try it. On a throw, yes. But I'll tell you what, it's not like in the international style where you get to go back up if you miss it. It can be real damaging. Right there, cost him two. Two to nothing at Hilton Coliseum at 134. Now you're going to see Jeff Gibbons work the wrist a lot. Well, he just kept Strauss absolutely flat. That's one of the first things that uh, the new people find out when they come into the college ranks. There's the end of the first period. Let's see that. Right here on this, he really throws a nice headlock. He got his hips around, but the head slipped out. And I'll tell you what, you have to have it tight in college wrestling if you go for it, because if you don't get it, it hurts you. Well, that's uh, Bubba Strauss on the bottom. Gibbons took the up position. He feels he can put the legs in like this. Strauss has the arm in, however, on the leg. And uh, once like the work, Gibbons off from this position. Well, Strauss really wants to get out of here because he's got to take that that mat domination away from Jeff Gibbons to win here. It's important that he, that he gets an escape if he's going to be in this match because Gibbons could really set the tempo and really dominate you on the mat if you let him. That's considered a potentially dangerous position because Gibbons' knee was being bent severely. So they come back to the center. They used about 25 seconds. This time, Gibbons flattened him right away. Right, now you're going to see him go to work, keeping him flat also. And He's going to try to work to the side, maybe work some hip tilts here and score some points. But I think most of all, you're going to see Jeff Gibbons try to develop the tempo here and ride him out. Looking for those points, but he's not going to do anything really risky. Hilton Coliseum, it's Iowa against Iowa State. Bottom man is Stalling. Stalling against Strauss on the bottom. He's the Iowa wrestler against Jeff Gibbons of Iowa State. Well, I would guess the reason the referee called that is because Bubba Strauss was not bringing his hips and presenting them up and getting to his knees. He was laying flat. Well, they're up now. Gibbons trying to keep his man down, but Strauss is able to come to his feet. Now we're in a, this hand fighting position. Strauss did a nice job of hand fighting there. He did, and he got out. So it's two to one. He did a real nice job there of hand fighting. There's a former Iowa State national champion, Frank Santana. Quite a showman in his days. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he had the talent and the skills to back it. Quite a businessman now, they tell me. Now let's see, we have uh, 30 seconds to go. Second period, two to one in favor of Gibbons. Nobody's put this match away. Strauss has done a nice job of keeping Gibbons out. Gibbons has not created the openings he wanted to it for his low level attack. Gibbons again trying to tie up on the arm. That's his prelude to an attack. Quite often. Nice move over the leg. Beautifully done, but Strauss counters it well. And now Gibbons has the takedown and he's getting back points at the end of the period. No back points. 
Boy, we've, we've, oh, here on the replay, he tripped the leg, got in on a single, and drove straight through, and took him immediately to his back. Strauss really helped him there by turning into him, and almost made a good move himself. But Gibbons recovered well, and I'll tell you what, there's where that new rule came in again, because you know last year that would have been two and two. Two minutes to go here, it's Gibbons four and Strauss one as we go to the third period. And Strauss starts on top, and Gibbons comes to his feet. Out of bounds. Crowd of Hilton, it's Iowa State five, Iowa two. It was a draw at 126 pounds between Kelly and Regan. Well, Strauss has to be thinking about how is he going to score the points he needs. Is he going to be turning him, or is he going to be letting him go and going for the throw? Well, he didn't exactly let him go, but Gibbons got out, it's five to one. Back on their feet again. Gibbons has had two takedowns. This time. Nice shot. Nice shot by Strauss. Yeah, he's supposed not to have shots. That's right. We haven't heard much about them. He didn't follow it through, though. And he got caught in the quarter. Gibbons has him in a quarter with a lot of time left. A lot of time. He's just trying to put the pressure on. You won't see Gibbons go anywhere here. And there it is. A pin for Gibbons of Iowa State. He went right, counted him right into a cradle, and that was it. With five, a time of 5.49, Gibbons over Strauss, and I think that might make up for the draw at 26. Right, that was really good presence of where I'm at as far as Jeff Gibbons is concerned. Now we're at 142. We have Joe Gezzi of Iowa State, ranked number six in the red, against All-American Greg Randall of Iowa, ranked number two. I must say, Tim, you ought to know Greg Randall pretty well. You were his coach in high school. Right, he's a great wrestler, and he made his coach look awful good. <laughs> These two are no strangers. They've met a few times. In fact, guess he has given him problems before. He's tied him once. Greg's won another match by a pretty good margin, but uh, you've got to consider Gezi as a threat to Randall since he has given him problems in the past. What about that wrist now, Gezi? An unusual tie. There's an what Randall does extremely well. He gets in on the legs. Beautifully done, a single to a double, and he has Gezi in some trouble just for a second. Two to nothing, Randall. He did a really nice job of cutting off. That's what Strauss needed to do the match before. And obviously, Randall feels real good on his feet, but he did a nice job of getting into the double leg situation there last time. Randall and Gezi. This is Greg Randall's last year at Iowa, and he has yet to win that national title that he's come close to winning three times. Three-time All-American, he's been in the finals twice. But you know what he wants. He you wants bet. to stop on, uh, to stand on top and get that gold medal in March. Gezi of Iowa State is a junior. He'll be back another year. He's from the state of Ohio, and I'll tell you what, we just uh, keep seeing on different teams that state of Ohio keeps putting out good wrestlers. Yep. Right here, I'm sure that uh, Iowa State coach wants to see Gezi develop his own offense right here and get into Randall a few times. He's a scrambler, this Gezi. I mean, I'll tell you what, you hold your breath sometimes and you think that he's in trouble, and he'll go to his back. He'll do anything it takes to score points. He's not, uh, he's not a conservative-type wrestler when he's uh, out on the mat. Get off your shoulders! Get hand off your 
That's Gezi on the left in the red against Randall. And you can see Randall's pretty hard to penetrate there. Greg Randall has such tremendous balance. He knows where he's at. It's just one of those things that you don't teach it. It's there. It's inherent in him. He has great balance, good hip action. It's just hard, like you said, to get into him. And I'm sure this week of practice really helped him in his shape because he was coming off an injury. Interesting to me, I uh, uh, guess he's trying to stay away from Randall. He wants to keep away from him. And on that leg again comes Greg Randall, beautifully. He'll try to high leg this one, maybe. No? He's got two. Makes it four to one. That's tough on the leg. Four to one now, Randall. Five, six to one. Back points. Back points, and uh, there's Jim Gibbons who was unhappy about that. He didn't think it was a two count. And so Randall has piled it up here the way he wanted to. Good first period for Greg. Well, I'll tell you what. Greg Randall is doing something that I'm sure Danton Gable is very happy about. He gets in on his shots, and before he was coming up and trying to control that underhook and always looking for that hip action throw. But he has developed a couple of low-level attacks right here that has worked for him, and he's gotten two nice takedowns. 18 years there, and 16 times one of these two teams has won the national championship. 16 of 18, and Iowa, of course, for the last nine years in a row. Six to one, guess he gets his turn on top. And I think you're gonna to go see, down. right, and I think you're gonna see Gezi go right for some points. Well, he obviously needs them because uh, Randall, the way he started, could make this a major decision. Greg Randall of Mount Vernon, a four-time state champion. You aren't going to take credit for even one of those, huh, Tim? No, it's an individual sport. The wrestler deserves the credit. <laughs> Gezi on top. He is a tough rider. But I will tell you, Doug, we had a good time. It was fun. It's Iowa against Iowa State. We've gone through three matches, and the Cyclones lead 11 to 2. You see Dan Gable. Yeah, I think what Dan wants uh, Greg Randall to do now is to come off a little faster on the whistle, control those hands, and get out. There is the whistle, switch. Oh, guess he's got to put some it. things together. I guess he's tough here. I'll tell you what, he is going to put the hurt on somebody if they let him. He is tough, he's wide tough. He'll go to his back to score points. But he's down by five, and so he can't just, uh, he has to turn his man over. He has to get Randall on his back somehow. And I don't think too many people have done that. We're back with about a minute and two seconds left to go in the second period. Well, what Greg Randall should not be doing is getting conservative. Well, we've had a couple of surprises so far. 118 mile match was actually a very good one until Summit got a throw and won it. But at 126, Regan surprised Kelly with a draw, and then at 134, Gibbon surprised Strauss with a pin. Now you're seeing Joe Gezi riding Greg Randall at 142, but trailing by five points. He's doing a good job of keeping Randall down on the mat, but he does have to turn him if he wants to get back into this match. You hear Bill Roth talking out there. There's Speaking Randy of that, yeah, Lewis. that Olympic flavor right there, there's one of the Olympic gold medalists from 1984, two-time national champion from the University of Iowa, Randy Lewis. From Rapid City, South Dakota. Randall gets to his feet this time. This is the best he's done on this ride. I guess he's tough. He yeah, he is tough. He stopped the switch. But again, as we say, the man on top is the one who needs all the points. There's a warning against Randall. Second 
Second period is history. Guess he wrote him out. Two minutes. Look ahead to 150, by the way. Tim Krieger will be up against Jim Heffernan in the undefeated. The battle of the unbeaten. Number one against number two. Always a close match. We have a couple of those tonight. There's Gezi. Well, I think Gezi wants, knows where he wants to be right now, and he's chosen it, and he wants to score. Oh, he almost fell into a back situation there because Randall's a toughie. And as, you, as I said earlier, he'll go to his back a lot. He just did what was vintage Gezi right there, and he got out. I'll tell you what, he's a scrambler. It's 6-2 to two in favor of Randall. Randall's going to have to go here, or he's going to get called for stalling again. He's got to put on the moves he was doing in the first period. He had he, a couple of beautiful single leg takedowns in the first period. Right, he had it going for him, and I think it's open to him there if he's got the shape. There it is. Yes, he's trying to counter in a different way. Oh, that was a near thing. We've got a real scramble. Very active. This is the third period, which I, I think says something about the shape of these two men. Yeah, they've been going hard. And you saw the shot by Randall. The only difference this time is he didn't get it followed through like he'd like to. But he is getting in when he wants to. Randall! Stopping just for a second in order to let uh, Gezi tie up his chin strap. We have how much time left? 55 seconds in the match. Randall leads by four. And Gezi knows he needs multiple points here. And he'll be going for something that's going to get it for him. It's tough, tough, tough to throw Randall, though. Randall's a wonderful defensive wrestler as well as a good offensive wrestler. Gezi has not been able to reach him at all. Greg Randall. Last year finished second in the Nationals for the second time. Oh, a double leg quickly by Randall. He did a nice job of hooking the legs there. Got it, did a nice job. But Gessie is hustling to try to come around. It's now eight to two in favor of Randall. And a reversal for Gessie. Makes it eight to four. With only a few seconds left. You can see Gezi is going to have to settle for losing a three point decision. It's Greg Randall bringing the Hawkeyes their first win. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, that was a good win for Greg in the fact that he knows Gezi is trouble when he gets on the mat. And I really think that Gezi deserves a lot of credit there also for remaining trouble for Randall. Randall did something, though, that is really going to take him a long way, and he has varied his attack, Doug, and he showed us there that he has a great low-level attack. That's Greg Randall. The score was actually 8-5 to five because, yes, he had riding time. Yeah, he did a nice job of riding that second period. Here comes one that a lot of people came to see. This is the one you showed up at the door for. The ticket is worth it to see at 150 pounds. The national champion, Jim Heffernan, wrestled number two rank, Tim Krieger. Neither man has lost. They wrestled twice last year, a draw the first time, and Krieger won the second time, although Heffernan went on to win the national title. It's Iowa State 11, Iowa 5 after four matches. Well, you know, these matches have not been the most exciting matches. No. They've been deliberate, they've been... Uh, but you know, it may come from the fact, it's interesting to note that both coaches call these two the best students of the sport on their team as far as adding to their wrestling repertoire. But it may be You're that... You're talking about the two matches, uh, the matches between Krieger and Heffernan. That's right, the two previous matches. They haven't been the most exciting. But maybe it's because they're so smart on the mat. Heffernan won the national title last year, and he placed the two previous years, or actually in 85 and in 83, registered in 84. Krieger is only in his second year of collegiate wrestling. And Heffernan is generally considered to have an edge on the feet, I would think. On the feet, you're right. 
In fact, last year, I think Heffernan shot in on a really nice single and took him down to start the match. Usually the aggressor at the first. But if this match is going to be decided on the mat, you've got to give Krieger the advantage. You find out who learns what from year to year, each man trying to add to his repertoire. Hilton Coliseum this afternoon. There's a nice single leg by Heffernan, but he can't go anywhere with it. Krieger fought it off. That's right. It was a good hip action by Jim Krieger there, because it wasn't that bad a shot. He was in, but it was a good hip action. Heffernan's very quick. Pound for pound, they tell me, Krieger is, might, be, might be the strongest man on the Iowa State team. He's, he's a really, really hard worker, as is Heffernan. Now Krieger's in on a single leg. And this time, Heffern, uh, Heffernan's in on the, in the leg. In the air, and Krieger's gonna see if he can find some way to counter this. There it is, stalemate. I'll tell you what, Jim Hefferman definitely needs and wants to have that takedown in the first period. He wants to have the lead going into the second period. Krieger of Iowa State on your left. Heffernan, the national champion from Iowa, who has never beaten an Iowa State wrestler. That's really That's interesting. That's strange. I think he was beaten twice by Larry Jackson and Nate Carr and a couple of times, and now Tim Krieger once. And You kind of wonder go, what goes through a guy's head, you know, some kind of jinx there. Well, maybe nothing. He might just say, well, it's one of those things. <laughs> now, you see Krieger trying to reach from way out. He couldn't do it, and Heffernan, Missed his shot, so neither man has been able to do it. Well, Tim Krieger's doing something here that it's pretty smart wrestling. He's making some own sh his shots of his own. They're not real serious shots, but they're enough to keep the referee off his back. Ten seconds to go. No score. And we'll see if there's enough time for anybody to get anything here in the first period. No. There it is. Now let's see whose choice. Heffernan gets his choice. He says, he says we'll stay on the feet. Well, I can understand that. Heffernan feels this is his best position. Krieger's not at all surprised. No, Krieger's best position is on the mat. He is really tough, and you don't want to get underneath him. Yeah, go give him a chance. Go give him a chance. And I'd say that's where Heffernan's weakness is. So he's going to say, I pick where I'm strong. On it. Have a reminder, too, by the way, that later on, speaking of 150 pounders, as Heffernan misses a shot, we'll bring you Chuck Patton with a new sports feature called Best Shot. And Chuck will analyze techniques of top wrestlers, and tonight you'll see Nate Carr, who is a national champion, 150-pounder. Well, it's a, the match is true to form. There is not a lot of scoring going on, and you know there really never has been between these two. They're both very tough. Two minutes, second period, after a scoreless first period. But you notice there's been no, no warning against either man. That's what I mentioned about Krieger there. They've done enough. I think Heffernan really has been the aggressor on his feet. Heff Krieger has fought him off, but he has also done something to keep the ref off his back. He has made shots of his own. Krieger was the outstanding wrestler in the Las Vegas championship this year. And Jim Heffernan was the champion of champions at the Midlands championship. They're two of the best. And this will be Jim Heffernan's last year in a Hawkeye uniform. Krieger still has two more years to go. Speaking of the Hawkeye uniform, you see that Roman numeral 10 there. I think that uh, has something to do with going after the 10th championship this year, don't you, Doug? Yep. Iowa State against Iowa, Hilton Coliseum. I'm Doug Brown with Tim Johnson. Heffernan again uh, was not able to complete that shot. We have 30 seconds to go in the second period. Now you know in the third period that uh, Krieger is gonna take the top position when he gets his choice. He's a ferocious rider. Well, you'd think he would anyway, although no scores if a uh, man gets out and he isn't able to take him down. Good question. Now Krieger's in on a single this is leg. His first time in on the leg. Let's see what he does. He has got to either drive through or stutter back. And it's on. Big takedown with five seconds to go in the second period. A big takedown. Krieger leads two to nothing, and now he certainly will take the up position. 
That really put Jim Heffernan where he did not want to be. That was a nice job. Oh, right here on the replay, Krieger, this is the first time he was in on the leg. He did a nice job and he took away the brace by stepping through and tripping. Now Krieger took the down position. Krieger feels he's gonna come out and get a three to nothing lead, as he just did. And now he feels, he, uh, I assume, that he can afford a takedown if he misses it. Well, I think what Tim Krieger has decided is that he is not gonna let Jim Heffernan in. He's done a nice job so far. He doesn't have any stalling warnings against him. He feels very comfortable on the feet right now. He's able to, to uh, fight back against that arm on the outside. You know, so many people think that the power comes from your arms. If you watch Tim Krieger, and we just saw Greg Randall with this kind of ability, it's the hip power right there. When Jim Heffernan's in on him, it's his hip motion. The pressure, the motion, he's able to move well. Krieger's gonna have to make a move here, or uh, Bill Roth is gonna shake a finger at him, I think. And if he stays true to form, he will. Nice single leg shot. And it's a two to takedown. It's a takedown for Heffernan. And now it's three to two. Happened right on the edge of the mat. Who's that, Rat? Rat? Here on the replay right here, you see right there, he created the opening. He got on a single and he cut across an effortless move. It was really nice. He cut the angle away from Tim Krieger. And Heffernan just lets him go. Four to two because a takedown with 55 seconds here to go. A takedown would tie it. No riding time at all. Boy, that was an important takedown for Jim Heffernan to get back to the dominance that he believes that he should have on his feet. Real tough go out there. Here are two horses. Four to two, Heffernan two. Krieger has the four. Iowa, leads, Iowa State leads the Hawkeyes 11 to five after four matches. And they'd really like to go to intermission. Each team would like to do something just big before the intermission. Well, Krieger knows where he's at right now. Again, Krieger shrugs off that single leg. A warning against Krieger. A warning. A little too late for Jim Heffman there. And that's it. Krieger maintains his undefeated run against Jim Heffernan, the defending national champion. Krieger wins four to two. Four to two, Krieger. You know, it's interesting, Doug, that how he won that match came down to a takedown for Tim Krieger. Isn't that something? Well, I suppose if you do it at the other man's, uh, in the other man's ballpark, that's fine. There's Dan Gable. That's the end of the 150-pound match. We're back again at Hilton Coliseum, where Iowa State leads Iowa 14 to five after half the weights in this first meeting of the two teams in the 1987 year. Our college wrestling season starts today. I'm Doug Brown with Tim Johnson. We're happy to have you with us. And we have lots more ahead of us. Our schedule is uh, out. Uh, we'll be on Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock, our regular time each week. First one, Iowa and Arizona State. There's a little later time for the UNI Lehigh than UNI Wisconsin, Drake and Illinois, Iowa State against Lehigh. Those are on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock. And Iowa against Oklahoma State, a Saturday meet. Boy, that'll be a big one. And Iowa, that's at 9 o'clock. Iowa State against Oklahoma. And Iowa State against Iowa, the rematch on another Saturday. Now, those uh, are the meets on college wrestling this year on Iowa Public Television. And reminder, too, that the 1977 team from Iowa, Iowa State, which uh, was the last Iowa State team to win, and it was the last team of any sort to win before the Hawkeyes started their nine-year run, is here tonight. Quite a few people there, such as well, Johnny Jones, see the people there, Mike Land, Casey Bartles, Randy Nielsen was on that team, Joe Zusban, who finished second in the Nationals that year, Kelly Ward lost to Lee Kemp, Dave Powell, Dave Allen, and Frank Santana was the only national champion on that team. Bob Fouts was the heavyweight. 
That's uh, 1977. That was their sixth uh, time in uh, history that they'd won the national championship. Though. And the coach was Harold Nichols. You see him sitting there with his brother and his wife, Ruth, on the right. Yes, uh, now Ruth has uh, Nick sitting next to her at the meets. You After think she has some reservations about that? I think probably she does, because uh, uh, if you ever watch him at a meet, he gets a little excited, and I don't think she's used to having to put up with that. Coach Nichols is probably having a better time now than he ever had before, <laughs> sitting back and getting the yell and just really not having the anxieties he might have had before. Especially when his team is winning, as they are tonight, against Iowa. Iowa State 14, Iowa 5. We have some very strong... Hawkeye wrestlers through here at 158 pounds. It's John Heffernan, a sophomore, Jim Heffernan's brother, against Stuart Carter. Now, Carter is 16 and 5 this year. John Heffernan, you got to wonder what's going through his mind. He just saw his brother lose his first match of the year to Krieger. Now, what does that do to him coming out here to start the second half? As far as I'm concerned, the answer to that is the same as wrestling. It's an individual sport. It's hard to say. It could really inspire him. It could go the other way. It's all up to what's going on inside his head, and we don't have any idea of what that is. Now, we know that uh, there was some doubt about John Heffernan on the right. You see him in the black. Is even wrestling today because I knew he wasn't had a little touch of the flu. But Dan Gable has decided that they've got their heads together and decided it's all right. He's ready to go. You know, sometimes I've seen it so many times when somebody has an injury or is a little bit sick. Sometimes they come out and wrestle better than they've ever wrestled before. I think they know that they have to be aware of where they're at. Well, Heffernan's in on the leg, uh, and you see a really tough counter by Carter but it's not enough and Heffernan takes the lead two to nothing I'll tell you I think this Heffernan from what I've seen of him is going to be a very fine wrestler he's a real sound basic fundamental wrestler he's got a lot of potential you see his range he's tall and there's a lot of difference in size length here between right. these two men he keeps real good position right there is a good yeah. example of it you know sometimes it's harder for a tall person to do that and you see him leaning over but there's no such thing as john heffernan leaning over without being in good position he does a real nice job there well and you have to also go an awful long ways under his arms to get to his legs it's a good counter wrestler too it's two to one after the escape heffernan feels confident on his feet and he left uh, carter up two to one it's a nine-point team lead, which can disappear in a big hurry, you know. For instance, at uh, 134 pounds, Jeff Gibbons had a fall over Bubba Strauss, and suddenly it was an 11-2 match. And you know, no, but he really expected a pin there, and so that's a good example of what can happen over these next five matches. In case you joined us late, Perry Summit beat Steve Martin by five. There, here comes Heffernan in again on the leg. No, no corn, no points. Summit beat Martin, 14 to nine. Kelly and Regan Drew, that was good news for Iowa because Re Kelly's highly rated. And then Gibbons turned it around with a fall over Strauss in 549. Randall beat Gezi, a good match, as expected, eight to five. And Tim Krieger won the battle of the unbeatens at 150, four to two over national champion Jim Heffernan. So it's 14 to five, and here we are in the second half. You know, John Heffernan's length could present a problem to, to Carter here because Carter has some nice snatches, nice attack right there, no. But look at that length. Look at that counter situation right there. Good move with the arm under there. That's a fine counter by, that's a fine counter by Heffernan who looks as if he's liable to come out with a point. No. Does he look like a potential winner or not? Heffernan. He's got the tools, he's got the potential, he's a good basic wrestler. I'll tell you what, right here, Carter's in on a nice single, but it was just the hip action and the good presence of mind where he's at, and then the leverage, look at that leverage, comes around, Carter was able to hang on to the leg right there, but really it was all Carter's move, but Heffernan took it away from him. And now, after that escape, it's 2-2. You don't get in any deeper than Carter just got in on that last shot. No, you sure don't. That was a long shot by Heffernan, and he made it look nice. Takedown for Heffernan, Carter, two escapes. 
Well, again, this is a, this is a different match. When you stop for an intermission, now somebody has to get the ball rolling again. Where's the momentum gonna go? It's just like in any sport that has halves or whatever. It's the team that comes out, plays, or wrestles really tough right at the beginning of that second half sometimes dictates who's gonna win. 2-2. Two -two. It's Carter against John Heffernan. I'll tell you what, I don't think Stuart Carter has this figured out yet, and he's, he's a really smart wrestler. He's tough, he's, he's real workmanlike, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets it figured out. Nice trip this time, and he scores, so Carter leads 4-2. Well, I think you called it there, Tim. Well, he's been around a long time. It's a he's nice trip. Stuart Carter's paid his dues, so to speak. He's wrestled behind Krieger. Here it is. Nice. He, he had a snatch there. He goes the opposite way, trips him. Stays with him here. Stayed with him tight and went up and controlled the hips. Stuart Carter who's grown a lot over the years, too. That's another thing. You see the Iowa coaching staff there, Mark Johnson, next to Dan Gable. Mark is a very important part of the Iowa program. We have just 40 seconds to go here, and Carter's doing a tough job on top. Well, if there, this is where John Heffernan is uh, susceptible, on the bottom right here, and he needs to come up here. He doesn't want Carter to be controlling his arms like that. Carter has one arm barred tight, or he did have, not anymore. Warning against Heffernan. He's ridden in for 50 seconds so far. Heffernan's a different wrestler on the bottom than he is on his feet. Right. You know that he's going to improve. He's young. On the bottom's where he needs to improve. That's the end of the second period. You notice where Heffernan chose. He got the choice. He chose up. He feels like he can do the job on his feet. And it's only 4-2. Carter has a two-point lead. All these matches are important. And I really believe that uh, Iowa State figured they had to win this one because uh, Carter is more experienced than Heffernan. Well, I think you hit the point earlier, too, Doug. Is you just want to get that momentum going your way, and it's important to start it off. <laughs> Carter trying to control the hands out in front. Now, Heffernan was able to make some long outside shots like that. And he reached Carter in the first period with him. Carter's having better success this time. Oh, almost got dragged that time. Remember, Heffernan has had one warning. He has to stay active. Right, it looks like Carter's looking and working to try to find that opening to get in. Right now, it looks like he is the aggressor. 50 seconds to go. And now, a point is taken away. Well, actually, given to Carter, 5-2. And Carter's able to get in. Now, but look at this link right there. Whoa. Oh, that one worked. 7-2. Yes, I was with you there. I thought that the Heffernan's length in that position would probably save the point. But Carter's in on top, doing well, leading by 7-2. And now, again, he... There's another point. That makes it eight to two. Well, I'll tell you what's happening here. You're seeing John Heffernan slow up a little bit. Could have something to do with the fact that he's had that sickness earlier. But I'll tell you, Stuart Carter is really doing a nice job. Next, we have a battle of unbeatens again. Jackson against Alger. You want to stay tuned for that. Kevin Jackson against Royce Alger at 167. And there's the victory with riding time, 9-2 to two for Stuart Carter over John Heffernan at 158. And the Cyclones have run up a 17-5 lead. In the last battle of undefeateds, there wasn't much scoring, but I'll bet there is here.
as we come up to 167. I think this is going to be a real exciting match. I think it's contrasting styles. We have a very physical, brute-like wrestler in Royce Alger. He likes to come out there and try to intimidate his opponent. He's just really, really tough. He comes out of Brad Smith's program in Lisbon, and I'll tell you, Brad puts some great wrestlers out. And Royce is one of the best he's ever put out. But Kevin Jackson is a three-time All-American. He's slick. He's explosive. I don't know whether he, he'll lose his cool. I think he's got the kind of experience that it's going to be tough to beat. Kevin Jackson placed three times in the Nationals in the LSU program, and now he's coming to Iowa State. Last year in open rank meets, he beat a lot of <laughs> Marty Kissler, Mark Van Tyne, the number one and two finishers in the nation last year. And you know that Alger was at 158 last year. There's a shot by Jackson, a double leg. And he gets a two. That's his specialty. That low level attack that Kevin Jackson has is one of the, right here, he drives him through. I'll tell you what, you don't see many people that follow through with a double leg like that. He just knocks him right down. And if they hadn't gone out of bounds, he might have had two more points for back points, Doug. And an escape for Alger as Jackson lets him up. He wants to go on the feet. A very confident, seasoned, experienced, talented, fast wrestler. See Jackson uh, glancing at the referee. He doesn't want the hands in the face. Right, he's saying, uh, this isn't a boxing match. This is a wrestling match, and I want it that way. We've used a minute. <laughs> Jim McMahon. <laughs> Looks like it. That's Jackson number one. There's the double leg again. Boy, that, is, that isn't a double leg. That's a freight train. Man. Iowa State 17. And the Hawkeyes, five. And we're at 167. Jackson leads Alger four to one. He'll probably let him go again. You see him in that. Uh... No, he might stay with him for a while. At least control him to get on the feet. And now Alger turns right into it. Nicely done. Let's see what happens here. And it is a reversal. Do you know that is the kind of wrestler Royce Alger is? You bet. He did not let up. And when Jackson let up just a second, he was in on him. Did well, a nice job. You have to give reaction time. And Jackson was not, did not let him get away enough. <laughs> and Alger turned right in on him. Right here, Alger did a nice job of staying with him. Coming up and controlling the hips and making sure he gets the two. Royce Alger. So now it's four to three. Jackson in the down position with how much time left? About a half of the first period. There's a caution against Jackson. That was a big reversal for Royce Alger. In easy, top. Well, in top competition, you have to go all the time against everybody. And Alger, you know, is going to give you Seven minutes of top speed. There he is. Give him room. Numbers one and two here. Hilton Coliseum, Iowa Public okay, Television broadcast in. of the Iowa Iowa State Wrestling Meet. And now Jackson is out. Five to three. I'll tell you, Royce, just, he's going to keep coming. Uh, Alger's going to go at you and go at you. So Jackson, who got two stunning takedowns in the first period, has got to keep doing it for seven minutes, or he Let him in. is in there. Oh, with a, he has a bear by the tail. That's right. Now, Royce is going to try to establish what he wants to do out there, and he'll look for snaps and control in the head. Yep, you see his in tie up tight. Boy, Alger's putting a lot of pressure on him, a lot of pressure. 
Jackson doesn't want to be in a defensive posture, but that's where Royce has put it. We have 45 seconds to go in the first period. And as we said, they're scoring here. What happened? You haven't seen Jackson do what he was doing in the first 40, 50 seconds. Well, there is a, at least part of it. Not a complete shot. And so Alger comes away with 26 seconds to go, trailing five to three. There's Iowa's last national champion we just saw, Dwayne Goldman. Nice, nice high crotch, but Jackson countered it beautifully. You know, it was almost as if Kevin Jackson knew what was coming and he let him have it and finished it up the way he did because Royce was really in there. Now. Oh, he was. I mean, how many times are you going to let let uh, Alger get that kind of a, get that deep on a high crotch? Right here, when Royce is in, he's there, and it's just as if Jackson knew right where he was and he threw his hips right in and had control of the crotch. That's what made the move yeah. for Jackson. Well, he hoisted him. Alger hoisted him and nothing happened. <laughs> Jackson on top, Alger hand fighting it. Jackson leads by four, seven to three at the end of the first period. He had three takedowns. Alger had a reversal and an escape. You see Jim Gibbons and Wes Anderson and Ed Banning. Iowa defers. Jackson wants the bottom position. Leading by four. You see the bandage on Royce Alger's uh, knee there. He's coming off uh, arthroscope about a month and month, five weeks ago. 17 to five, Iowa State leads Iowa in the team score. Carter won the last one over Heffern in nine to two. In fact, Iowa's only won one match and that was Randall. They got a draw from Regan and at, against Kelly at 126. Now Royce likes to come out here in front. Look at that, he's a very aggressive wrestler. He likes to come out in front and trap the head and look for tilts. It says something about him that he's yeah. going to go out on a wrestler like Jackson. He's not bashful. He's not afraid of anybody. No, he's definitely not bashful. Jackson is in. Into his uh, base, anyway. And he'd like to stand up, but Alger won't let him. I wonder if, if uh, Jackson might be taking a little rest down there. Well, you know, you don't know how different things affect different people, but you know, this has to be the first time Jackson's been in a meet like this. Down at LSU, they wouldn't have had a packed house like this to wrestle in. This is big time wrestling. And you wonder how it affects. He's up seven to three, but Alger is giving him a real go on top. Royce uh, Alger, tough in the right position. Jackson's gonna have to get up and go here or he's gonna get a warning from the referee. Out. That's pretty much uh, Royce Alger's uh, doing there, letting yeah. him up. He went right out front. If he couldn't get anything with it, he was going to let him go. And it's now eight to three. Jackson has a lead of five. But here comes Alger in on the leg again. See what happens when that, oh boy, Jackson is a tough counter wrestler though. Got good balance. Now Jackson has the position. Boy, is that some go, huh? I'll tell you what. <laughs> Alger is a great counter wrestler, and he's kind of funky. He likes to get in and crank on that neck, and you saw him right there get in a position where he really liked to be, and he, he threw a nice counter on him to at least get out of it with no points. Nope. That was a chain of events there. That was uh, an exciting series. 
25 seconds to go. Eight to three, Jackson leads, but it's only the second period. No, blow your nose and let's go. Only the second period. And Iowa needs it. They need this one badly. They have Chip Chipparelli up against Metzger next. They'd like to get points in that one because that's Keep one on where Iowa was definitely favored. He's just sitting down there. to win big. Yeah, I don't know what's hurt on Kevin Jackson here, but I do know that uh, Royce Alger is going to keep on coming at him. Yep. No doubt about it. Ready? What's time, Bob? Keep it going. All right, here we go again. Royce Alger, he's ready to go. There's Kevin Jackson. We'll find out what he's ready to do. 25 seconds to go in the second period. Jackson leads eight to three. And Jackson goes into the double, but this time, for the second time, Alger wouldn't let him have it. Well, there's a couple of things happening here. One, Jackson doesn't have the the shape that he had in those first minute. And two, they're getting kind of slippery out there, and that takes a that takes an effect. Again, Alger's in on the leg, but the underhook stops it. End of the second period. Boy, it's a long match, isn't it, for Jackson? Leading eight to three. Jackson. Set. All right, Alger gets his choice, and he goes down. Here are some of the matches we have ahead of us. One wrestling match on Tuesday night, our regular weeknight series, Arizona State versus Iowa. And we'll bring you Iowa and Iowa State again next Saturday night at 7. Gymnastics. Looking forward to that. Cyclone and Hawkeye gymnasts. That's one. All right, Alger is out. He trails by four. It's Jackson. Now Jackson's time? complaining about a sore foot, and I'm not quite sure. Time? You hear the referee asking if he's out of injury time. It's less this year. It's a We've minute and a half instead of two, like last year. Stay out here now. Alger against Jackson. And Alger has the leg again. Two! And Jackson is taken down. Alger is coming on. I wouldn't be surprised He's to see him let Jackson go He's again. <laughs> There's a warning against Jackson on the bottom. This is what Iowa needs. They need points out of Alger. They need to win this. Let's go. Undefeated wrestlers at 167 pounds. I think you're going to see Royce let Jackson go here and go on the feet. I think this is where he wants him. Right here. He just did a really nice job of getting around, controlling his hips and hooking his legs and bringing him down for two. All right, Jackson doesn't dare stall because he's been warned. Now, there he goes, he is letting him up. Nine to six, Jackson escaped. Jackson hasn't scored a takedown since the first period. And that's a point for Alger. It's a stalling point. You got a point. And that makes it nine to seven, and a takedown by Alger will tie it. And this is a tough match. It could turn the meat back toward Iowa. They need it, 17 to five, Iowa State leads. Single leg attempt fails. Now a takedown will win it, because it's another penalty. And also, it's uh, riding time is in favor of uh, Alger. We look at the clock and see a minute, nine seconds of riding time. Your boy is blocking off, coach. He's blocking off. He's blocking off. Let's go. And it's nine to eight, Jackson. It's actually a tie here, because Alger has riding time. And Alger, sit on the leg. Jackson fought him off. 
25 seconds to go. You, what, you can't do anything with the head in the middle right there. I'll tell you, Jackson's going to have to get some offense here. Or he's going to get hit again. Royce Alter has come from behind. He's been, he was behind eight to three. And now, I don't think Jackson realizes it's a tie. He probably doesn't. That's two. That's two. Jackson is called for penalty for stalling, a two-point penalty. And now, it really is 11 to nine in favor of Alter. With only three seconds to go. And Alger wins. With riding time, it's 11 to 9 in favor of Royce Alger. He defeats Kevin Jackson at 167. So the ratings will turn. That was one tough mental job on Royce Alger. And I'll tell you what, that Jackson has a double leg that's unbelievable. What he's got to do is go to work a little bit on his shape. Yep. We've got a barn burner next time those two meet. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it, because Alger really went at it. Now, this should fire up Ciparelli, and he is heavily favored here against Metzger. And we might be in a match here before <laughs> this thing is over again. You know, it's surprising, and yet it's not surprising. There, there are no surprises in this match when it comes down to it, really, because you have to expect the unexpected. Circle. Metzger against Ciparelli at 177 pounds. Ciparelli, Rico, is rated first in the country. Steve Metzger is a senior from Ames. You've got to believe that Ciparelli's out there to get the fall. He's out there to get multiple points somehow. He's got the capability of doing it. Metzger's got a job to do out there to keep this match close. Now Rico's in on the leg. That's two. That's two, That's as the referee three. just said. He'll get That's it any way he can. Well, he, roll up points, he'd like to take him down enough to get a, a technical fall, 15 point difference. Ciparelli's really improved on his feet. Well, if it, let's say he did get six. It'd be 17 to 14 going into the last two matches. Boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's still up in the air, Doug. Iowa against Iowa State on Iowa Public Television. I'm Doug Brown with Tim Johnson, and we're thrilled, as always, to be able to bring you these matches between the two great wrestling powers of Iowa. I know if Briggsy's watching, should say two of the three. And if, uh, well, this is just great for all the wrestling fans in Iowa to be able to see matches like this. I know I'm excited just sitting here. It's got to be out here now. Referee is Bill Roth. He's the man with the microphone on there, so you can hear what he has to say. Metzger and Ciparelli. Metzger is down now, four to, four to one. Well, Ciparelli's doing what he needs to do right there, and he's making it look easy. You're gonna see him go right for this cradle. Yeah, he's trying to bring the head around to the leg if he can with a cross face. We have a minute and 10 seconds to go in the first period. A lot of time, we just started here at 177. After a, I guess you'd have to say a, an upset. You really would, a big upset. Oh, definitely, that was an upset. Alger, the never say die kid, there he is. I've seen Royce Alger wrestle for a long, long time, and I know what he's made of, he's tough, and you know, I'm not surprised, but it had to be considered an upset for what Kevin Jackson's done over the last four years. Oh, you bet. And it was Alger 11 to nine over Jackson. That's one. So in the battles of the unbeatens tonight, Super Iowa back. won one of them and Super Iowa State the other, because Krieger beat Jim Heffernan by two. Now four to two after the escape. Ciparelli in the black. Well, you can see Metzger looked a little intimidated uh, that time because he. Eddie Manick, his coach, former uh, national champion at Iowa, an Olympic champion, just told him to get down a little bit lower. Well, actually, he's been in the same room as Ciparelli, who's on the same team, I think, in 83. Duck under by Ciparelli. That's two. And he got two. That uh, makes it six to two. 
But Ciparelli wasn't doing this a few years ago. He wasn't controlling the people on his feet like he is now. He's creating takedowns through duck action. He's got a low level attack. It really, really increases his ability to dominate his opponents. Might mention too, by the way, that take one will not be seen this evening. Your regular schedule, Iowa Press, will be seen at 7.30. At 7.30 tonight, Iowa Press. This is 177, Rico Ciparelli riding with a 6-2 to two lead you know, Steve Re Metzger. Rico Ciparelli is back from injuries off also. He had bruised ribs, and he's just coming back. Oh, this is where, this is where Rico is really tough. No, one count, no point. Not enough for a point, for back points. Your choice. Metzger gets his choice. It was only one count, no points. As we mentioned earlier, Iowa and Iowa State have won 16 of the last 18 national championships. Now, here's something we're going to do this year for the first time. We're going to have a college wrestling quiz. You ready, Tim? Ready. 16 of the last 18 national championships have gone to Iowa or Iowa State. Now, you name the other two schools to win NCAA titles since 1969. Okay, we'll tell you a little later about that. I think I can do it. And we'll give you a hint, too, in a little while before we get there. The two teams that Get on him. got into the Iowa Iowa State run since 1969. No, 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 same way. What's that? <laughs> Hilton Coliseum, where some people want to see it close up, I Get guess. Iowa State 17, Iowa 8. Although the Hawks won the last one. Royce That's Alger over Kevin Jackson. 177. There's an escape for Ciparelli. And that makes it 7 to 2. You know, speaking of the uh, consecutive national championships won by Iowa, that is an all sports record they're going for this year. There has never been a team in NCAA history to win 10 in a row. And they're going for an all sports NCAA record to, if they're going to win that 10th. It was Yale, won 9 and Golf? Golf and Southern California won nine in track and field. And That's Iowa won nine in wrestling. <laughs> Metzger against Ciparelli. We have about a minute to go in the second period. Rico leads seven to two over Steve Metzger. Control all the fingers. Steve is an Ames young man. He went to Ames High School. Never won a state title, although I think he finished second one year. Well, Metzger is not too far off from doing what they want him to do, and they just don't want him to get into that major situation. Single leg for Ciparelli. Two! And he got his knees. He managed to take down, keeping his knees in. And it's Ciparelli, nine to two. Okay, you both been warned for stalling. Let's go now. Right here, he's got the leg up right here. He really hoists it high, and you see him trip and take that brace away. And stay with him and keep his knees in. That's really important. His knees are still in, and he has control. Two points. Nine to two after that takedown. That's uh, four takedowns for Chipper Alley. A couple on single legs and two duck unders. Now he has a situation that almost looked like a, a near fall situation because he was looking, he was digging for a cradle there. You certainly don't want to get your head or chin anywhere near your knee when you're wrestling Chipperelli. Nine to three now after Metzger's escape. Now Metzger would ideally want to stay out of a situation and getting scored on in these last 15 seconds. Break it. You got to go to work now. We have 15 seconds. Circle it, both of you. 15 seconds to go in the second period. And a six-point lead for Ciparelli. He has riding time. And there's the end of the second period. Ciparelli will... Iowa State gets the choice. There's Jim Gibbons and Dan Gable here at 177. Let's go over that quiz again. Iowa and Iowa State have won 16 of the last 18 national Both championships since 1969. Now you name the other two schools to win them. It happened in 1971 and 1974. And there they are. Well, I think it was Tommy Chesbro's uh, rookie year right. that he won at uh, 1971 and then Stan, Stan Abel in year. 1974. And so I'll tell you what, it's been a long time. But it wasn't surprising to see that it came inside the big four. No. Let's go. Back to the middle. Back to the middle again. Penn State has kind of uh, changed the thinking of the big four this year. 
starting on the feet in the third period, 9-3 to three in favor of Ciparelli. He would like to get at least a major decision, but what he really wants is a fall. Well, he's coming back from an injury, too, and I'm not quite sure that he's as third period uh, far along in his shape as he's going to be later on, too. I agree with you. I think that we're going to continue to see an improving Iowa team over the next month due to the injuries they had early on. Well, not only that, but they're going to have Brad Penrith back somewhere. Although Regan has looked terrific, too. They're going to have to find a place maybe for both of them. That spot just may work out for him. All right, a minute left to go. At 177, Ciparelli leads by six. Iowa State leads Iowa 17 to eight up to this point. Iowa State has won four matches. There's Ciparelli's takedown. That puts it in major decision territory. That's two. Actually, I called it too soon. One. 11 to four after the escape. That's two. Now he's going to work. 13 to four. I'm kind of surprised he stayed down on the mat right here because he really had it going there as far as his feet. Stalling on top on those hips. We got one point on bottom. That top man is stalling. There's a point because they've both been warned. Get to the side, okay? Now Here it's important for him to hold uh, Mesker down. I don't believe there's go. any riding time. Well, there is. There is, actually. So he's all right. Chipparelli has an eight-point you know, lead and riding so time. So he can give up and escape. Yeah, he, can, he can't afford to lose the escape. What he really wants, as I say, what he wants to do is get the uh, cradle in there somehow. Move up. <laughs> Same way. There's 15 Let's seconds to go. Red, you down. Well, I, I think Metzger's kind of dodged the big Red, bullet Red. anyway. Well, I want to think so, so far. I win. This would make the score 17 to 12 if the score holds up where it is right now. And Metzger has been warned for stalling too, but I suspect he would probably want to just hang on in there. That's it. Riding time makes it 14 to 5. Chipparelli over Metzger. And it's the second straight win for the Hawks. Adds four to the team. And it's Iowa State 17. And Iowa 12. And Iowa State has to win one of these two. Comes down to what we said. They wanted to finish fast. They're still in their game plan. If they go according to their plan, they'll win these final two. And like I said, Iowa has to break that plan, and it's got to start right here. But you never know. Here we go at 190 pounds. And the Iowa State sending out Bob Gassman, who has been wrestling up a weight this year at 190, against Charlie Sherritts, a young, improving wrestler for Iowa, a sophomore from Columbus, Nebraska, against Gassman, a senior from Downers Grove. And Gassman's been really tough at 190 pounds this year. Well, he's the veteran here. He's tough. He's got a good attack. It's going to be interesting to see when he goes back down to 177, how he reacts, because he has been tough at 190. Sherritts is a kind of wrestler that open up, really likes to be out in front of the crowd, really rises to the occasion. He's really improved. Well, this puts, uh, this makes us always look ahead to a heavyweight because in Iowa and Iowa State, it comes down to that so many times. For Iowa, we know who it's gonna be. It's gonna be Simpson, Brooks Simpson. Young freshman from Newton. And his opponent will, either, will be either Andy Cope, who is a full-fledged heavyweight, or maybe Eric Volker, who weighed in at 190 today. Well, it's really up to Sherrits right here to make sure it does come down to the heavyweight for Iowa. Gassman finished third in the Big Eight last year at 177. You see the team score has tightened up. It's 17 to 12, and people are a little uneasy in Hilton Coliseum. A little bit uneasy. They want to see something happen. They don't know quite what to expect out of uh, Charlie Sherrits of Iowa, visiting team. Well, right there. Right there is the strength of Bob Gaskin. He is really quick. And you know what, 190, quickness sometimes is the important ingredient. He's quicker than most 190 pounders. And right there, he showed it. Gaskin. He's gone through his career without a red shirt here. 
He never wanted to redshirt. Well, you know, that's kind of unusual in these days. They always feel that uh, they can take that year to develop. And Gasman leads by two. You can see Sherritt's trying to slide his hips out. That's one. And Gasman doesn't really argue too much in that situation. It's two to one. Don't be blocking. Sherritt's in the black from Iowa. Sherritt's is a pretty good basic wrestler. He keeps pretty good position right here. I'd say that uh, for 190, he probably needs to get a little bit stronger, but he has good technique, good fundamental wrestler. On the other hand, he's wrestling a man who's coming up from 177, so the strength difference shouldn't be important. Right. But the quickness difference could be. Gassman has one takedown. Black is one, black is one! That's for backing out. Sherritz gets the warning. I see uh, Royce Alger on the other side of the room walking away with a big ice pack on his knee. He strained it a little bit in his victory over Royce Alger. Or uh, over uh, Kevin Jackson. He's already won the victory over himself, I think. <laughs> there is Eric Volker. Now the question is, will he be up at 190? Or will he not? Or at the heavyweight, or will he not? Sherritz here has to develop some kind of leg attack, some kind of action here, and get some control. That's the end of the first period. Gassman leads two to one. He had one takedown on a speed move. And Sherritz gets his choice and decides to come Stop underneath. Man. See what he did in high school. He was a fine wrestler at Columbus, Nebraska. Two-time state champion over there. Lost only twice in high school. His father did a nice job of coaching him over there. Gassman. Managed to bulldog Sherrits and stay behind, although Charlie comes right back to his feet again. We're in the second period. It's Iowa 17, Iowa State, Iowa State 17, Iowa 12. And the Hawks have won the last two matches. They got an upset. Royce Alger beat Kevin Jackson. That pin by Jeff Gibbons at 134 looks bigger and bigger. Let's think, Tim. I think that probably has everything to do with the way the match is going into the final two match. Well, you can look at that uh, one move that Summit made, too, the big throw for five, got him a victory at 118. So it seems like moves. you, yeah, it seems like you can always go back to a couple of big moves and see the difference in any meet. Gassman locks up with Sherritts. Well, what's happening here is Bob Gassman's developing a tempo. He's controlling the match. Here we go, minute 10 left, minute 10. The time ten. is ticking off, and he's getting some riding time here. He has a minute and seven seconds worth right now. There's Jim Gibbons, looking a little placid, I think, uh, 190. Well, he'd like this thing to hurry up and get over. <laughs> One, we're both up. And it's 2-2. Two -two. All right, Sheriffs is back in the ball game again. Now it's... And you know, he's going to stay in the ball game. I think he's a, he's a real good fighter. Although he doesn't have the experience that Gassman does, I think that we're going to see it go all the way down to the end. It's 2-2. Two -two. Gassman, the two-on-one tie. I'd like to work something off of that. Isn't able to do it this time. And Sherrod's almost had the single leg that time. Boy, they hit heads. Boy, they hit heads hard. That was a nice shot by Charlie Sherrod's right yeah, there. Every time here, you make them over. Well, I'll hit. tell you, the uh, the second half has been Iowa's half so far. Let's look at that. Well, right here, Sherrod's makes a nice move. He creates Ooh, the opening right there. He's in on the knee, but they hit like that ram tough commercial from Ford. Those two are ram tough, I'll tell you. I think you had the wrong uh, car company Is there. It? Yeah, but we'll okay, dodge we that one. Ready? Okay, here we go. Again at 190 pounds, Iowa State leads by five in the team score. But it's tied here at 2-2. With this match, one more to go. 
Now Gaston has a center. <laughs> he had it and didn't keep it. That's Brooks Simpson who will be up at heavyweight next for the Hawks. It's one of the things about Gasman. He, he has a reputation for getting in on the legs and sometimes not finishing. Right, his follow through has not developed into what the coaches would like to see. He develops that. He's really got the shots to go with it. Gasman has his choice. He wants to stay up. He has a riding time advantage. A minute and 15 second riding time advantage for Gasman. And Sheritz has been warned once. Gasman wants to stay up here. Well, a tie keeps it going down to the heavyweight match, doesn't it, Doug? Yes, so, it does. But it's not really a tie right now because Gasman does have riding time advantage. Here we are at heavyweight. Sheritz has head and arm, head, uh, front headlock now. On that front headlock, he's got to get him down to the mat to work it. Charlie Sherritts of Iowa, Bob Gassman of Iowa State. Black is considered stalling. That's a penalty against Sherritts. Well, he needs to take down now. now and he can uh, eliminate the riding time, and he could win if he got a takedown before 15 seconds left in the match. That's right. So it still comes down to the takedown here. Again, the spin move from behind, and Gaston's knees are in. He gets the takedown. You know, it's like a, a wide receiver catching the pass right on the edge, out of bounds. You've got to know where you're at. Gaston really knew where he was. That's the whole meet if, he, if this holds up, because it's five to three. Riding time advantage for Gassman. Here is it. Gassman coming around. Gets it again with his speed. Is that quickness again? Went one way. Garrett's blocked him out. Zipped around the other side. Boom. He was on top. Two points. Really quick as a cat. Use it. And he's he's had three takedowns all on that kind of a move. All on speed moves. There it is, seven to three. This would wrap it up for the Cyclones if Gassman pulls it out. We have what left? 30 seconds left. Now he's gonna probably hang with him as much as he can. He hasn't been warned yet, you know. There's the escape, seven to four, Sherritts. He'll have to try a throw. He'll have to throw from here. He has 15 seconds to do it. And I'll see Gasman could afford that. 17 to 12, Iowa State over Iowa. This would make it 20. And another move. Makes it 9 to 4. 9 to 5. Riding time, 10 to 5. And Iowa State will defeat the Hawkeyes. Bob Gaston put it away at 190 pounds. That was a real workmanlike performance by Gaston. He did what he needed to do. He went out and controlled the match. Didn't do anything fancy, he used his quickness, stayed out of trouble, controlled it. Nice job by that young man. And that was at 190 pounds. Cyclones 20. And Iowa 12. Here we go at heavyweight. Okay, we'll shake hands, guys. And for Iowa, it's Brooks Simpson from Newton, a redshirt freshman. And Andy Cope is wrestling for Iowa State. He came from a, a program that lost its wrestling. That's uh, Andy Cope. He's a two-time NCAA qualifier from Indiana State. He's lost some weight. You've got to know that he's been working with Ed Bannick on his technique. And not only just his technique, but you got to know that that's helped him mentally, and that's so important. Yeah, I think uh, Iowa State coaching staff is 
really feels very good about this young man's chances. He's come down from around 260 down to around 230, and they feel that's really going to make him a better competitor. On the other side, this Brooks Simpson is a real fighter from Newton, Iowa, and he's got a lot of potential, a little lighter than Andy Cope, and he just needs to develop a little more strength and technique, but he's sure got the heart. I, I, I've seen him wrestle a few times. And Turn it in. He's a fighter. Well, we saw him a couple of years ago in 1985 win a state championship. 19, yes, the spring of 85. He went 35 and 0 his final year at Newton High School. And in our coverage of the state championships, we saw him go to the top rung. Cope has a 2 to 1 lead here at heavyweight. Well, Iowa State did get out fast tonight the way they wanted to. Maybe not quite the way they wanted to, but it worked out. It was a three to nothing lead after Summit beat Martin at uh, 118. Summit had a big throw in there for five points. That was it, a, a throw to an air ball. And at 126, Iowa began to look better because Regan tied second rank Bill Kelly. But it wasn't to stand up uh, as a major change because then Jeff Gibbon surprised Bubba Strauss of Iowa by pinning him with about a minute and 10 seconds, minute and 11 seconds left to go in the match. A fall for Gibbons that turned everything around. That was 11 to two. I really believe that was a turning point right there. Both of you have to have it off. And Randall won, he beat Gezi eight to five in a good match. Tim Krieger won the first battle of unbeatens against Heffernan, four to two. There you see Colton on the double. Boy, that was a powerful double. That's a nice low leg attack for a big heavyweight like that. And he followed through. He was able to change his levels, get in, snatch that knee, and drive. Right here, he drives that shoulder Got right into in. the belly button right there. And he keeps good position right there. Stays, covers him, and keeps his knees in. Four to one score with Cope on top. One I left off top. at 158 where uh, Stuart Carter going. beat John Heffernan. It was a bad night for the Heffernans here. And then Royce Alger gave the Hawks a real shot of hope by upsetting Kevin Jackson 11 to nine. Rico Ciparelli beat Steve Metzger 14 to five for a major decision. And Gassman put it away for Iowa State with a win over Sherrits you just saw. And here we are at heavyweight. That was a nice shot that Brooks Simpson just made, but he needs to make it in the middle of the mat. Come on, come on, get in there. There he goes, tries a high crotch, but it's fought off by Andy Cope. It's the first time that Dan Gable's ever lost two dual meets in one year. And you know, he's got a couple of tough ones left. He's got, of course, Iowa State again. He's got Oklahoma State at home in a couple of weeks. It's going to be an interesting year. And I believe it's going to really test Dan Gable as far as his coaching, because you know that he aims for March, and he plans on being in top when it comes to the NCAAs. Warning against Cope. You see the time is out. In the first period, Cope leads by a score of four to two. Red defers, Ben Ward, Ben Ward for Stalin. Red defers, Red defers over, that means Takes Cope down. is asking Simpson to make his choice. Brooks goes down. down. On Tuesday night at nine o'clock, join us on our regular weeknight spot for college wrestling, Iowa against Arizona State. Iowa and Arizona State. Oh, yeah, now, Iowa State has some tough meets coming up, too. They have to go down to Oklahoma State next week. And then they have Penn State out at Penn State. So <laughs> neither of these teams. Another great double by Andy Cope there. He really has some force behind there. Turn it in. That makes it six to three after the escape by Simpson and the takedown on a double by Cope. As I was saying, you can't accuse either the Hawkeyes or the Cyclones of dodging any of the in top teams it. in the nation. They really go out there and go after him, and that's what makes him good. One and we're both up. Cope lets him go, six to four. On, you ain't got time to Andy go. Cope. Got time. He's only a junior, too. He has another year after this for the Cyclones. Get him off your head. Come inside, tie up there. You know, that's the second year in a row that uh, Iowa State Gone into the season without a true, look, what looked like a, a heavyweight. No, they didn't have one until Indiana State go, go. dropped its program and Andy Cope came in. Well, it certainly can't be considered the forte of either of these teams. 
but Cope is really making the coaches happy here. Simpson had the leg but couldn't keep it. And you know, even though Brooks Simpson is a good young heavyweight, you got to know that in the wings, getting ready for the season after a long football season is Mark Sinlinger, a three-time state champion who still has a couple of years of wrestling left, and you, you wouldn't be surprised if we see him in a month. Cope leads six to four. You see it up there and the numbers on the wall behind them. With about 30 seconds to go in the second period. Iowa State 20, Iowa 12. Cyclones have now won two meets in a row against the, the Hawkeyes. Close the gap, get in there. Both of them at Hilton Coliseum. Get in there. In all the meets wrestled at uh, Hilton Coliseum, Iowa State now leads 10 to nine. There's a nice take down and it's six six. I was just getting ready to say, you know, Iowa's really got three heavyweights vying for this position. They got Andy Heyman, who is a good heavyweight, who's in, not in there tonight. Brooks Simpson and Mark Sinlinger. It's gonna be an interesting Rich next down, few weeks Rich at that heavyweight down. position. That was a really nice shot and follow through by Brooks Simpson. There. So it's six, six. It was at one time four to one. And Simpson had a good second period. Seven to six now, Cole, but Simpson lets him up. He's got a lot of heart. Couldn't get a single. No. Couldn't even get the double because it went out of bounds. Simpson cut him off a little that time. Can't tie up the second with his match. That's two, Well, showed a lot of quickness on Cope's part right there. He was able to catch Brooks out of position there, but for a heavyweight, he really moved fast. Nine to six is the score. That's well, I'm sure he moved faster than he did when he weighed 260 pounds. Circle, let him in. And again, a quick move. Two. Yes. Two. Again, the counter. That was good execution there. He snapped him by and followed through. And it's 11 to seven. In favor of Cole. 11-5. 11, five. 11 is that the right store? Okay, sat in on him. 11 to seven. How many takedowns for Cope? That's five. That's one. 11 to eight. A lot of escapes for Simpson. There is no riding time advantage, however, because uh, Cope has less than a minute's worth. Well, you get the feeling that Cope likes to be on his feet. He has a single. He doesn't have a takedown yet. I don't know if he's going to get one at this spot. No points for both sides. That's twice. He hasn't been able to get the double. He hasn't been able to. He uh, starts out really well there. He's got a really nice shot. It's just Brooks Simpson has been able to get off the mat. We're in the last 40 seconds of Hilton Coliseum. What Cope does really well, he controls the head and he gets, he changes this angle of his opponent and opens up the leg for him. Circle. Simpson still making shots out there. And that's it. No riding time, but it's an 11-8 victory for Andy Cope, the Iowa State heavyweight, over Brooks Simpson. And the Cyclones win by 11, 23 to 12 over Iowa. And a big victory for this growing, improving, proud young Iowa State program. There you see the teams out shaking hands.
Dan Gable against his Iowa State rival Jim Gibbons, who's wearing the white hat there and feeling very happy about things tonight. Well, there were some good things from both sides tonight, but Iowa State had more of them. And as we said, maybe the biggest one was that pin at 134 pounds by Jeff Gibbons over Bubba Strauss that really turned this meet into a, an Iowa State big lead, Iowa catch-up situation. You know what I saw, Doug, though, is the same thing as last year. There were a lot of close matches. A lot of things can happen the next time around. I think that Iowa State did a nice job of executing the night, and I think it could be a really great match the next oh, time yeah. around. I'm because really looking forward to it. Remember, that one's down at uh, Carver Hawkeye, and there will be some changes. You might see Brad Penrith in there and a few, and Kevin Sindlinger and a few other people. And you Mark, might see Mark Sindlinger. Mark Sindlinger, I'm sorry. And you might see some other people, too, for Iowa State, like Bill Tate. And some people like that. Well, anyway, and, Eric and you might Volker. see Gasman down in 77. You might <laughs> see Boker in there. You bet. It's going to be really, really fun. They're not set. But as you said, you have a feeling that the national champion is going to come off of one of these two teams. Oh, I definitely do. I think it's going to come down to Iowa and Iowa State again. And, and uh, it's just going to be a real exciting year. And I think this match has given wrestling fans in Iowa something to talk about yeah. for the next month. We're nothing chauvinistic about that, although we are here for Iowa Public Television. Well, once again, the final score is Iowa State 23 and the Iowa Hawkeyes 12. A reminder, Iowa Public Television's next broadcast of college wrestling will be this Tuesday, January 13th at 9. The Hawkeyes take on Arizona State Sun Devils.